evening friends today we are going to talk about uh, severe acute malnutrition so we'll start with a case discussion okay so rani a one year old uh, female child resident of up informed being mother and reliable came with chief complaints of loose stools for the past 15 days fever since 15 days not gaining weight well for the past 6 months so usually you may not have a specific uh, presenting complaint for uh, uh, sam it could be infections it could be vitamin deficiency sometimes rarely you can present with uh, severe acute malnutrition features like uh, edema dullness parents might bring with that complaint or not gaining weight and failure to thrive so these are the usual presenting complaints infections failure to thrive vitamin deficiency symptoms and sometimes full blown uh, sap symptoms like uh, edema and dullness so before going to the part we need to know uh, what is uh, the classical two conditions which is not often seen nowadays kwashiorkor and uh, marasmus so kwashiorkor has edema marasmus has wasting because of the wasting uh, the uh, folds you will have only folds in the buccal region baggy pant appearance face buccal pad is lost they look like uh, monkey faces but the baby kwashiorkor because of the edema they look like a sugar baby fat sugar baby marasmic children are alert and irritable whereas kwashiorkor are apathy apathy means they are not they are dull they are not interested with the surroundings and the appetite is very good for marasmus which is a good prognostic factor but they are difficult to feed kwashiorkor are difficult to feed and most of the skin changes and hair changes are very common with kwashiorkor so based on this we will move on to the uh, elaborating the complaints so here the presenting complaints is diarrhea for more than uh, 15 days so apparently normal 15 days back then she developed uh, loose stools 8 to 10 episodes per day it was watery not blood not mucus so we have to differentiate whether it is acute or persistent so a diarrhea more than 15 days becomes a persistent or chronic in nature and acute is less than 2 weeks duration okay and we have to differentiate whether it is diarrhea or dysentery when there is blood in the stool okay and uh, there is satinismus mucus then it becomes dysentery where we need to give definitely antibiotics and since it is going uh, towards the persistent nature some history is needed to differentiate whether it could be malabsorption type of diarrhea whether it could be uh, osmotic type of diarrhea okay osmotic uh, which is secondary lactose intolerance where uh, you don't give the feed the baby will not have the stool so no stools during the night time is suggestive of secondary lactose intolerance so initial infectious diarrhea later on the lactase disappears resulting in lactose intolerance and will result in osmotic type of diarrhea so where you don't give feed there will be no diarrhea malabsorption diarrhea you can ask history of bulky stools uh, foul smelling stools uh, uh, stools that floats in the pan so that is malabsorption diarrhea and also ask history related to hydration status so child developed irritability so child is irritable decreased oral acceptance urine output is reduced so there is some evidence of some some dehydration okay and mother has noticed that the eyes is looking sunken so usually sam children will have sunken eyes but the mother noticing recently the eyes is sunken is more relevant in sam children to say that it is uh, dehydration and there is no history of any vomiting no abdominal distension no abdominal distension could be a complication of diarrhea then you elaborate something about a uh, fever but uh, remember that fever is not commonly seen in sam so fever is insidious gradually progressive mild to moderate and relieved with medications with no aggravating or relieving factors so here fever with diarrhea suggests that uh, this is more of an infectious cause which is uh, persisting for more than 2 weeks plus ask uh, history related to failure to thrive so here the baby is not gaining weight well for the past 6 months child is now 1 year Uh, you can ask histories like uh, how you are saying that the baby is not gaining weight so whether the dress size they are not is it the same and whether the child is appearing small and comparing with the other children or whether someone has noticed that the child especially nurses and doctors during immunization they might say that the child's weight is less so how are you saying that it is failure to thrive so that history you can ask the negative history in sam 
you said that fever is there try to rule out other causes of the infection so there is no history of associated cough coriza fast breathing no history of any pustular skin lesions okay suggest you of any impetigo pyoderma no history of any ear discharge no history of any abnormal movements or unconsciousness suggest you of meningitis okay no history of pica or worms in the stool suggest you of infestation so not only infection infestation also important okay then ask history in sam ask history not only about infection about the vitamin and mineral deficiency so here mother has noticed that uh, there is some element of uh, pallor in the hands of the child but the child doesn't have any reduced vision especially in the nights for vitamin a no issue of bleeding from the gums or joints swelling suggestive of uh, vitamin c deficiency scurvy no issue of bleeding or easy bruisability suggestive of vitamin k deficiency no history of deformed uh, limbs or chest deformity okay suggestive of rickets so you ask such history for vitamin mineral deficiency then uh, since uh, edema is part and parcel of kwashiorkor if there is history of edema you have to ask rule out other causes of edema okay if generalized edema is there whether it is hepatic try to ask history of jaundice etc if it is congestive cardiac failure try to ask history of uh, breathing difficulty and uh, nephritis whether there is any uh, uh, hematuria okay and then kwashiorkor kwashiorkor try to ask history of any mental changes and skin and hair changes so in addition to the edema whether there are any mental changes if the child is dull and if there is any skin lesions and the hair changes is there hair is not very luster and hair is uh, easily brittle and it keeps falling off so these are all associated with kwashiorkor so try to rule out other causes of uh, edema uh, hepatic cardiac uh, renal and then finally say that it is nutritional okay then try to find out uh, what precipitated this uh, under nutrition both uh, you have to start from the birth but we will start with the main precipitating factors it could be immunodeficiency so history of any recurrent infections in the past history of recurrent hospitalizations and here diarrhea is there whether any previous history of recurrent loose stools greasy bulky stools suggestive of malabsorption celiac disease north indians where wheat exposure is there so celiac disease whether recurrent history of vomiting suggestive of uh, grd or any global developmental delay where feeding difficulties are there recurrent aspirations are there okay and uh, any history of any other chronic diseases which has been diagnosed or not diagnosed like uh, heart diseases and kidney disease chronic kidney disease where polyuria can be there fast breathing can be there especially for renal tubular acidosis in addition to this uh, always remember two important infections which can cause uh, undernutrition one is uh, tuberculosis so no history of contact with tb patient and then no history of fever with rash in the recent past suggestive of measles measles is a very debilitating disease which can cause undernutrition so these are the so you started with the presenting complaints then uh, find out the associated infections infestations okay any vitamin deficiencies if edema is there elaborate the Uh, rule out that it is uh, nutritional edema and not other causes of edema then try to find out what caused this uh, under nutrition whether it is immunodeficiency malabsorption grd cp ckd rt or tuberculosis okay then past history uh, no history of any similar illness in the past no history of contact with any infectious disease especially the uh, tuberculosis contact and also measles history no history of fever and rash in the past so here they might ask you how the measles rash will be it's a maculopapular rash it's cephalococcal starts from the ears and goes down to the legs and there can be non purulent uh, conjunctivitis uh, rhinorrhea okay so these things uh, can be there along with it okay okay and uh, birth history very important because uh, the malnutrition foundation starts from the birth okay so uh, the mother has conceived at 24 years of age whether it was a booked case or not whether they came for regular checkup whether they had the regular supplementation iron and folic acid supplementation what was the weight gain during the pregnancy at least more than 7 kg weight gain is important otherwise uh, the baby can be affected iron and folic acid was given Uh, no history of any torch infection drugs or radiation in exposure no history of any pregnancy related complications like gdm pah oligohydramnios or any fetal growth issues which has been documented you can ask in the history okay so 
quality of care is important make sure that the weight gain has been good uh, it's a booked case and uh, all the supplementations has been taken care of. and any issues related to the fetal growth has to be mentioned in the birth history and finally in the neonatal and postnatal history whether it was a term or a preterm because preterm obviously the catch up growth may not be there and uh, any issues at the time of birth has to be documented especially the birth weight because the birth weight is the single predictor of whether the baby will grow well in the later stages or not okay so low birth weight obviously has a disadvantage so here birth weight is 2.1k so it is a low birth weight uh, suggestive of intrauterine growth restriction is there so baseline itself has been low from here catching up and all might be a challenge if you have not taken care of the baby and uh, there was no issues they started breastfeeding from day one no issue of any nico admission no significant jaundice okay okay and coming to the nutritional history just as uh, developmental history is very important in cerebral palsy what is very important uh, here is nutritional history okay what is important is nutritional history so you start from day one you start from breastfeeding it's uh, it has to be very detailed nutritional history so breastfeeding was started on uh, day two exclusive breastfeeding was uh, initially given only up to one month so there might be some faulty feeding practices which has to be documented so the exclusive breastfeeding here only up to one month then animal milk was uh, started and uh, they gave cow's milk and it was given bottle fed and it was not properly cleaned okay and uh, home cooked meals were started only a few weeks ago now the age of the child is one year so a few weeks ago only they have started and the child is not good it keeps refusing that the home cooked food she gives only a uh, half cup rice of kanji every three times so complementary feeding when it was introduced introduced late introduction of complementary feed is all matters actually okay so six months it should have been uh, started so here it has been late uh, exclusive breastfeeding was not followed up and formula feed if it was given uh, what is the dilution pattern any faulty uh, practices all has to be mentioned okay and mother doesn't wash the hands uh, properly then ask sources of iron and calcium if possible here non vegetarian and eggs have not been introduced okay and uh, make a 24 hour charting later on so 24 hour chart don't start with just 24 hour charting start from the breastfeeding in nutritional history start from breastfeeding how long it was given how was the weaning what is the nature of the weaning what all the varieties the parents are giving then come to the 24 hour charting try to take down the whole uh, whatever the child is taking so here it is coming around 500 kilo calories instead of the 1000 kilo calories with a deficit of 50 percentage and the child is taking only approximately 13 grams of protein with a deficit of approximately 20 percent of daily so there is a deficit in the 24 hour charting remember the 24 hour charting has to be taken before the child was sick not at the time of sickness remember that and if exclusive breastfeeding is being if breastfeeding is being followed up so remember that it's very difficult to calculate calories in the 24 hour charting just assume that uh, for a less than 6 month old child 500 ml of breast milk usually they give up to 1 year they usually take around 300 to 400 ml and more than 1 year around 200 to 300 ml so based on that you put your calculation so each 100 ml is 67 calories and uh, one grams of uh, protein no so based on that you calculate okay so and uh, diet history remember always cross check with the anthropometry you cannot have a very good diet history and the anthropometry being fault for any case always cross check with the anthropometry make sure that they are approximately the same anthropometry is also lagging diet history also there should be some lag so they might ask you how you are going to improve the diet any basic uh, way of improving so remember to make it calorie dense so how are you going to make calorie dense add oil so remember one teaspoon of oil has nine calories so adding oil then instead of sugar adding jaggery where iron is there and add egg for this child they have not used the non-vegetarian so the cheaper source good source of protein will be egg so add egg every day okay okay so coming to the immunization history so after the diet history coming to the immunization very important whether they have vaccinated as per the national immunization schedule when was the last vaccine given here only four months it was given so here the child is one year only four months was given so nine months measles has been missed so the child is sam child is at risk of measles so we have to do the 
catch up vaccination for this child so remember and also ask history of uh, bcg vaccination whether bcg vaccination was given and if national immunization was given then pertussis would have been given so these three diseases are very important for sam or measles tuberculosis and pertussis they are known to precipitate the sam very badly and uh, developmental history attained age appropriate milestones at present the child is able to walk without support wave bye bye and says two words you can elaborate the developmental history here uh, a bit for the one year has the child attained all the milestones gross motor fine motor social and language you can say but for malnutrition expect some motor delay may be there due to malnutrition okay then finally the family history uh, remember to talk about the number of siblings how was the spacing okay so here uh, the th this is the third child okay and elder sibling uh, also had some loose tools before but none had a persistent diarrhea like this child there is a one year difference between the elder and this child so there is a one year old uh, difference between elder and this child which is very small so spacing is less so that can affect the growth of the child okay and the socio economic history very important we need to know about the education of the parents what is the per capita income how is the condition so how is the hygiene how is the water supply whether there is access to good water supply and any other problems in the family like alcoholism okay so here they use a public supply they don't filter it and um, unhygienic environment is there and they are vegetarian most often they don't take non veg very often because of the economic condition and they don't have a toilet so they are prone for worm infestation so they belong to the lower socio economic group as per the kukusomi scale so the these are all very important in evaluation in the summary so summary so rani is a one year old uh, female child okay uh, presented with a persistent diarrhea and fever since the 15 days stools are watery with uh, no blood or mucus with evidence of some dehydration for the past 2 to 3 days she is not exclusively breastfed and bottle fed has been done and improper weaning and it has been started late child has a deficit of 50% in calorie intake and protein deficit of 20% and there is poor hygiene and sanitation is there so the analysis is uh, the child was normal at i cannot say normal at birth child was born low birth at uh, time of birth not exclusively breastfed bottle fed weaning was started late and it has been inadequate they have not introduced a variety of foods they, it has been inadequate and there has been a prolonged deficit in the calories and proteins which has led to undernutrition and finally it got aggravated by a current episode of persistent diarrhea probably due to poor hygiene so the, this is this are all the final analysis of a summary which you have done okay mm, and probable diagnosis what what is your probable diagnosis you can say i am dealing with a, a protein energy malnutrition with persistent diarrhea and some dehydration and i have to rule out the probable causes okay uh, i have to rule out hiv tb and celiac disease has to be ruled out okay okay and coming to the general examination very important actually in malnutrition the physical examination head to foot examination anthropometry are more important than the systemic examination you don't have much in the systemic examination okay so here is a child who is conscious and irritable remember marasmic children are irritable and kosherker are dull okay and coming to the anthropometry so the always compare with the centiles so and give your interpretation so here length is 68 cm which falls in the first and the third centile which suggests stunting okay so remember less than third centile for length will be stunting then weight is 5.2 kg which is very less usually you get around 9 to 10 kg so it is less than first centile or less than three standard deviation so it is severely underweight so less length is less we call that as stunting weight is less we call that as underweight and mid arm circumference is 11 cm so anything 11.5 cm less will fit under the severe acute malnutrition so less than 12.5 is called moderate malnutrition less than 11.5 is severe acute malnutrition and more than 12.5 is acceptable okay so you can have an acceptable mid arm circumference of more than 12.5 usually the mid arm circumference will be around 14 to 15 okay 
and uh, head circumference here is 43 cm which is uh, more than the third centile accepted uh, usually you have a brain sparing effect in malnutrition the last to get affected will be your head circumference okay and the final most important parameter will be the weight for length or the weight for uh, height it is less than three standard deviation and it fits with the definition for sam i'll tell you the definition of sam later on okay so weight for height is very important here and chest circumference is also very important here 39 cm remember at 9 months the chest circumference will start overtaking the head circumference so here it has not overtaken in malnutrition such thing happens so the head circumference will be still higher than the chest circumference in malnutrition okay and coming to the vitals uh, not much uh, so the vitals have been the same make sure that uh, there is no uh, hyperthermia suggestive of fever and make sure that there is no hypothermia Mal malnourished children are prone for hypothermia so less than 35 degrees celsius will considered as hypothermia and capillary refilling time less than 3 seconds make sure that it is not more than 3 seconds suggestive of any shock okay suggestive of shock so tachycardia crt more than 3 seconds all suggestive of shock and coming to the uh, important anthropometry remember these three uh, definitions low weight for height which is the important criteria for who criteria low weight for height it's weight for not weight for age weight for height less than two standard deviation is considered as wasting we call that as wasting we suggest you of acute malnutrition if it is uh, suggest you of moderate acute malnutrition if it is less than three standard deviation then it is called severe wasting suggest you of severe acute malnutrition okay so weight for height is an acute parameter weight for height is an acute parameter then comes low height for age less than two standard deviation we call that as stunting whenever height is less we call that as stunting and it is suggestive of chronic malnutrition if it is less than three standard deviation it is severe stunting okay then comes weight for age so remember weight for age less than two standard deviation we call that as underweight less than three standard deviation we call that as severely underweight so weight for age is a predictor of both acute as well as chronic malnutrition so remember uh, if uh, height is less weight will also be less okay so if uh, suddenly uh, any infection weight will come down so both acute as well as chronic malnutrition weight for age is a marker and less weight for age it is called as underweight the most important predictor for acute malnutrition is weight for height remember that it's not weight for age it's weight for height uh, less than two standard deviation suggestive of wasting and acute malnutrition and they might ask you about the shaki step for midarm circumference and they might ask you it is a age independent anthropometry and uh, midarm circumference has to be applied only from 1 year to 5 years it is an age independent anthropometry between 1 to 5 years okay and uh, because uh, it is not dependent on the age okay and uh, we use the shaki step for it so it has three color coded uh, region red yellow and green okay red suggestive of severe acute malnutrition yellow suggestive of borderline and green suggestive of uh, normal so for bidam circumference they use the shaki step in the primary healthcare setup okay then this is the most important slide the head to toe examination okay Mm, okay so as uh, regularly we do the ictrus paler cyanosis edema clubbing okay you do so here there is paler is present and remember imnci says that paler has to be looked into the palmar paler okay the, if it is uh, pale then it is called some palmar paler if it is severely pale and it looks white the hand looks white then it is called a uh, severe palmar paler so some palmar paler severe palmar paler some palmar paler is anemia severe palmar paler is severe anemia okay and here we look for edema because in quashiorca we often get edema and also look for uh, evidence of marasmus like visible severe wasting with several folds of skin at the thigh and axilla uh, is present or not usually the buccal pad of fat will be preserved here also it is preserved so uh, ictrus paler cyanosis edema clubbing you talk about that here paler is there okay mainly edema you have to look for and look for severe wasting visible wasting which could be uh, look into the buttocks region look into the axillary region thigh region then finally the cheek region uh, remember that buccal pad of fat is the last to appear okay then you from head to foot the hair 
hair usually in malnutrition it will be sparse it will be light colored coarse lusterless and it, it it's brittle and brittle and they fall easily okay do not use the term pluckable they will ask you whether you plucked or not okay so do not use easily pluckable okay they are sparse light colored coarse lusterless okay then you have your uh, skin changes i will come down to the skin changes uh, then cranium cranium uh, one year old child comment about the anterior fontanel it is open uh, it's wide open and there is some frontal bossing so wide open anterior fontanel frontal bossing all suggest you of rickets but remember rickets is a disease of uh, growing bones pm you don't get uh, florid manifestations of rickets so do not commit too much about rickets just say there is some frontal bossing sir and uh, usually we don't expect a uh, florid uh, rickets in pm okay then co comment about the nails Uh, high end deficiency so platinakia brittle nails can be there okay uh, most important will be the skin changes the, usually you get uh, the skin will be dry coarse uh, there will be areas of hyperpigmentation then this pigmentation gets uh, peeled off okay uh, they get peeled off to form hypopigmented areas ulcers all formed we call that as plaque pain dermatosis just like Uh, paint is falls in a old building, no? So like that, the skin will be. So we call that as flaky paint dermatosis or crazy pavement dermatosis. So such thing is not there here, but uh, dry skin is there. Some areas of uh, hyperpigmentation is there. Make sure any ulcers, fissures are there or not. Uh, any pyoderma infections are there. Fungal infections are there. Any scabies like uh, pruritic skin lesions are there or not. So the skin changes are very important. Okay, and here diarrhea is there. So look into the anal region. Any perianal excoriation is there. And finally, skin. Look for the BCG mark. Very important. Whether BCG has been given or not. But remember, BCG protects us against the severe forms of the TB. Not all forms of the TB. Then signs of vitamin deficiency. Head to foot. Look for signs of vitamin deficiency like bite out spots, which is looked into the lateral part of the conjunctiva. Bite out spots and any phrenoderma, corneal or conjunctival xerosis is there. Angular stomatitis. Here it's present. Any glossitis is there or not? And bleeding gums and any pain in the joints. Look into the oral hygiene. Here it is poor and caries teeth are present. There is no beading of ribs or knock knees or bow legs are seen. Only some some frontal bossing was there. Okay. Then here eyes are looking uh, sunken, uh, but that can be there in uh, marasmic children. There are no other signs of dehydration. Okay. And uh, some history suggests you of immunodeficiency. So examine for immunodeficiency like oral thrush. scabies seboric extensive seboric dermatitis or extensive scabies that all suggest you of immunodeficiency so here it is not like that and any history suggest you of any uh, any examination finding suggest you of dysmorphic features or congenital anomalies you have to do so this slide is very important for uh, uh, sam children systemic examination nothing much uh, you can just say s1 s2 heard sometimes in anemia some hemic murmurs can be there respiratory if there is some cough and so you can get some crepitations and uh, if tachypnea is there abdomen in quashiorcus some uh, mild uh, hepatomegaly can be uh, there okay and cns uh, the uh, irritability or apathy is very important and uh, the tone and power might be a bit on the lower side uh, and the pupils are reacting here so the summary is uh, uh try to put the positive findings in the history and the examination together so rani has uh, persistent uh, diarrhea with fever for uh, 15 days and some dehydration she is not exclusively breastfed uh, she has been bottle fed and improper weaning which has been started late child has a deficit of 50 percentage in uh, calorie intake and protein deficit of 20 percentage there is poor hygiene and sanitation is there family is of, of lower socio economic group and the baby was born low birth weight anthropometry suggests you of severe acute malnutrition stunting is there some paler keelitis is there a uh, few features of rickets like frontal bossing is there and poor oral hygiene is there and physical features are suggestive of severe wasting in the form of prominent folds there is no edema and irritability and diagnosis is a case of severe acute malnutrition with complications of persistent diarrhea and some dehydration probably it is infectious origin because fever was there with probable vitamin deficiencies like vitamin b and d and probable reason for malnutrition being low birth weight 
inadequate diet poor feeding practices in the background of poverty and illiteracy which has been uh, aggravated by this current episode of persistent diarrhea okay so coming to the investigations uh, you will have a battery of investigations uh, uh, basic investigation you start with blood sugar any sam blood sugar make sure there is no hypoglycemia to rule out infections a complete hemogram peripheral smear to rule out anemia also hemogram is needed to rule out any chronic infections the baseline how is the kidney how is the liver so rft lft serum electrolytes to rule out the rickets calcium phosphorate and alkaline phosphates are important to rule out infections blood culture urine routine and urine culture as well as a chest x ray to rule out the pneumonia and if you feel rickets is prominent then x ray wrist might help out chronic infections very important the tb and hiv so gastric aspirate for afb manto test and hiv elisa and here is a child with persistent diarrhea so whether there is any malabsorption celiac disease so ttg can be done uh, lactose intolerance so stool for uh, ph and reducing substances in occult blood then any infections like amoebic dysentery etc no so so stool for ova and cyst all can be looked for okay and coming to the discussion on uh, uh, sam so these are the major questions they might ask you so before going in we need to know the definition for sam so sam is only meant for 6 months to 60 months of age the criteria fits with 6 months to 6 uh, 60 months usually and presence of weight for height i remember weight for height below 3 standard deviation on the who growth chart okay 3z z score 3 z score or 3 standard deviation on the who growth standard or presence of bipedal edema or mid upper arm circumference below 11.5 cm so any one should be there so weight for height less than 3 standard deviation or bipedal edema or mid arm circumference less than 11.5 cm we call that as sam and mainly for 6 months to 60 months of age we use at this point uh, i would like to put one more classification if you want to remember is your iap classification where it is weight for age more than 80 percentage is considered normal 71 to 80 percentage is grade 1 and 61 to 70 percentage is grade 2 and 51 to 60 percentage is grade 3 and less than 50 percentage is grade 4 malnutrition similarly in sam moderate acute malnutrition is weight for height less than 2 standard deviation there will be no bipedal edema and the mid arm circumference will be between 11.5 and 12.5 cm so here once sam is diagnosed try to assess if there are any complications so what are the complications so whether the edema is severe edema and the child is having poor appetite child is not taking anything failed appetite test or child is having medical complications child can be having here persistent diarrhea is there no so persistent diarrhea fever pneumonia so any medical complication is there or one or more danger sign as per imnc danger sign is Uh, child is not taking anything child is vomiting out child is having um, uh, alter sensorium child is having seizures then those are danger signs so any four of these is there then you have to take it as complicated sam and the child needs to be admitted if any four are not there there is no severe edema the child is having good appetite no other medical complications no danger sign of imnc then we call it as uncomplicated sam we are going to treat at the home so what is home based management of uncomplicated sam we give home based foods or ready to use therapeutic food are you tf ready to use therapeutic food how much calorie we are going to give approximately 175 kilo calories per kilogram per day so you have to calculate that and we have going to give approximately 6 to 8 times a day feed has to be not 3 times just as we eat breakfast lunch and dinner it has to be 6 to 8 times a day in addition to that assume always sam will have infection so give oral amoxicillin give vitamin a mega dose give infestation management albendazole and most important will be sensory stimulation keep playing with the child keep interacting with the child then we need to have a home visit by a health worker they should regularly follow the child whether the child is gaining weight or not and what is this uh, ready to use therapeutic food the it is a very energy rich 100 g will give 540 kilo calories why so because it has groundnut paste peanut paste milk solids vegetable oil in it sugar in it sugar the child uh, will have a very good taste very good 
acceptability. So ready to use therapeutic food, peanut paste, milk solid, sugar and vegetable oil can be used. And if complicated SAM, we are going to admit it. So remember there are uh, 10 steps, at least this chart you should remember the initial stabilization phase where you are going to manage the complications, where you are going to bring the child back to the normal homeostasis. Then the next phase will be after one week will be the rehabilitation phase where you are going to uh, make the child gain the weight. Catch up will happen in the build the uh, tissues and rehabilitation will have from week two to six. So you can have a simple formula shielded, remember shielded formula. So S for sugar, H for hypothermia, I for infections, EL for electrolytes, DE for dehydration, D for deficiency. So the first day one and day two, I'm going to concentrate on hypoglycemia, hypothermia, dehydration and electrolytes. Electrolyte imbalance right from day one to till the end, I'm going to manage. Fifth point I'm going to manage also from day one will be the infections. And I'm going to supplement micronutrients except iron. Iron I'm not going to add uh, in the initial phase. Only after one week I'm going to add during the rehabilitation phase. Because uh, iron will promote the generation of free radicals which will support the infection and worsen the condition. Then I'm going to initiate feeding from day one with F75 formula. Then I am going to do the catch-up growth after one week by increasing the uh, calorie content, increasing the quantity of feed by using F100 instead of the F75. Sensory stimulation is going to be there right from the start till the end. And finally, after one week, prepare for discharge and follow-up. Okay. So hypoglycemia, remember... Uh, blood sugar, some key points I am saying. You can look into OPGI for full detailed management. 54 milligram per deciliter is hypoglycemia. Uh, you have to give, if asymptomatic, 50 ml of 10% glucose orally. If it is symptomatic, give 5 ml per kg IV, 10% dextrose. Start F75 as early as possible. Start giving 2 hourly. So remember this triad, always they go together, hypothermia, hypoglycemia and infection. So whenever you have hypothermia, look for the blood sugar. Whenever you have a blood sugar low, check whether infection is there or not. Hypothermia, remember axillary temperature less than 35 degrees Celsius is hypothermia. Avoid rapid rewarming in hypothermia. Dehydration, so remember that uh, it's not so easy to assess dehydration in SAM child. So you have to use other features like you cannot get sunken eyes so easily. They are unreliable. Skin turgor, they already have a loose folds of skin. So skin turgor is unreliable. So the thirst, weak pulses and uh, oliguria are basic signs for dehydration. Uh, in other words, assume that all SAM children have some dehydration and start ORS. And uh, the correction has to be done slowly. Usually for some dehydration, we give it over 4 hours. So here it has to be around for 12 hours. Uh, each hour you are going to give 5 to 10 ml per kg per hour of uh, ORS. And that ORS is not the standard ORS. It is going to be resomol or the rehydration solution for malnutrition. Where the standard ORS is going to be dissolved instead of 1 liter, we are going to dissolve it in 2 liters plus add the sugar and potassium chloride. Electrolytes, remember the always low sodium diet even if the serum sodium is low because the total body sodium is going to be high in malnourishment. You can give, you have to give max self 0.3 ml per kg IM to start with. Uh, supplement potassium 3 to 4 milli equivalent per kilogram per day. Infections, fever may not be there, but still infection can be there. So fever usually will not be present in SAM. Gram negative organisms are common. So you start with amoxicillin or ampicillin if injection along with aminoglycoside. If not responding, go for cephalosporin for at least 7 days. Deficiency, mineral deficiency, remember 1, 2, 3. Folic acid 1 mg, zinc 2 mg per kilogram per day, iron 3 mg per kilogram per day, but iron has to be added after 1 week. Vitamin A, remember 50,000, 1 lakh and 2 lakh for less than 6 months, 6 months to 1 year and after 1 year it is going to be 2 lakh. If there is any signs of vitamin A deficiency like xerosis, xeropthalmia, beta spots, no, it has to be given on day 1, day 2 and after 2 weeks again, third time. Iron is not added till good appetite. And regarding F75, uh, 2 hourly you have to start F75. It consists of milk, oil, sugar, bar, cereal. If you have a lot of diarrhea as in this case, 
you have to reduce the milk in the F75 and give more of cereal here. Followed by F100 in another two or three days, you have to shift over to F100 and then with the ready to use therapeutic food for catch up growth. Then followed by as soon as possible with the home based rich foods, add oil, add jaggery to it. Okay, so rich home based foods. What is primary failure to res failure to respond? Remember, if the child is not gaining appetite by day four, then it is primary failure. So day four or day ten, two things are there: failure to gain appetite by day four, failure to start losing. It's not weight. Failure to start losing edema by day four. Presence of edema on day ten. Still, edema is there on day ten, and failure to gain weight of at least five gram per kilogram per day by day ten is called primary failure. So failure to gain appetite by day four, failure to start losing edema by day four, presence of edema on day ten, and failure to gain weight at least five gram per kilogram per day by day ten is primary failure to respond. Then secondary failure is at any point of time after discharge. If the child is not gaining five gram per kilogram per day for three consecutive days, it is called secondary failure. And when am I going to discharge the child? Uh, criteria for discharge: There are no infection, appetite is good, and the child is eating at least 120 to 130 kilocalories per kg per day, and the child is gaining weight of five grams per kilogram per day for three days, and there is no edema. I have taken care of the immunization, and the caretaker has been educated. Then I am going to discharge the child, and this is the final uh, IMNCI criteria which I would like to talk. Uh, remember. Three things. Look for visible severe wasting. If there is severe wasting, then it's going to be severe malnutrition. Look for edema of both feet. If it is there, then it is going to be severe malnutrition. And determine the weight for age. So remember, even though we look for weight for height for Sam, but in IMNCA, it is going to be weight for age because it's easier for the primary healthcare worker. If it is a very low weight for age, then it is called severely underweight. That we already discussed. Then you have to counsel and assess the address the feeding problem. And if it is going to be uh, more than three standard deviation, then it is not very low weight. So remember, in IMNC, it is going to be weight for age. It's not weight for height. And uh, some last two questions: theories of malnutrition. So Gopalan's theory of disadaptation, which is uh, marasmic children have adapted to the malnutrition, whereas squash worker have not adapted to the uh, lack of calories. So that is Gopalan's theory of disadaptation. Then Golden's theory of free radicals. There is a lot of free radicals that is generated in PEM and they are unable to dispose it and resulting in injury causing Kaushyorka. Common causes of PEM they might ask you. Remember do not forget TB, HIV, measles. Those are the infections. Remember about the malabsorption especially celiac, lactose intolerance, cow milk protein allergy etc. Chronic infections can cause uh, the PEM, especially the cardiac, renal, chronic liver disease or any malignancies. And also any inborn error of metabolism also, they can cause PEM. Okay. So there are a lot of other questions. You can go through the uh, part of it. Okay.